What does it mean to pray in the Spirit? Well, for many people, you'll find out that they have a bad misunderstanding of this term. You hear this term, pray in the Spirit, a lot. The issue is, though, this phrase is only found once in the Bible. And the problem is that people have made this phrase to be something that it's not. When we look at the Bible, and we will, we're going to look at different examples of where in the Spirit, the phrase in the Spirit is used, not praying in the Spirit, but other times it's used just in the Spirit. We'll see how it's used and see how people have this misunderstanding because they may believe that this refers to praying in tongues. Now, the one time that we see this, this phrase, pray in the Spirit, it's not even really pray in the Spirit. The, the actual phrase is pray in the Holy Spirit. So let's go this in Jude 20. And he says that, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. And so what is he saying? Well, he says you yourselves, and he's, it's not singular, it's plural. He's saying you, you all, everyone, you guys, building you others, yourself. This is also plural, this word for your, this word for yourselves is also plural. So he's saying you all build up each other. And he says, so how? On your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit. What this phrase is in the Holy Spirit is not in tongues. We'll see why we get this or someone has this understanding of it or think that it might mean in tongues. But it simply means according to in the power of or by. However the Holy Spirit is, whatever the Holy Spirit is doing, that's where you ought to be, how you ought to be praying. That's the guise. That's the direction according to his power. The same thing can be said in the name of Jesus according to, based on what he's doing by that power, not necessarily in the spirit. Where a lot of people get this misunderstanding about praying in tongues, one, because with the rise of Pentecostal charismatic movement, you'll see a lot of people who are just, one, not reading the scriptures correctly and interpreting because they have this belief that we're to be speaking in tongues. We're all supposed to, even though Paul said not all speak in tongues, but they believe that Praying in tongues is different, though there are no such passages that even speak about praying in tongues. There is in 1 Corinthians 14 where the people, where the person might pray in a tongue, and then Paul corrects them because Paul has already stated that he doesn't want us to be ignorant of spiritual things or spiritual gifts, and so we should be doing things knowingly. And oh, by the way, he also says in verse 7 of chapter 12 that every spiritual gift, these giftings are for the benefit of everyone else, for the common good. We see Peter also reiterate that in 1 Peter. We see Paul also state the same thing again about four or five more times in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And so in chapter 14 is where we see this passage in verse 10. He says, there are perhaps many kinds of languages in the world and no kind is without meaning. If then I do not know the meaning of the language, I will be to the one who speaks a barbarian and to the one who speaks will be a barbarian to me. So also since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, Look what he says, seek to abound for the edification of the church or the edification of the body. And so before I get to this point, Paul is stating again, since you are so zealous, be zealous, seek to uh, bring about the edification of the body, which is what he says earlier in chapter 14, as well as what he's already stated in chapter 12. The purpose of these gifts are for the edification, not of yourself, but of the body. Then as we go down to the next verse, look what he says in verse 13, he says, therefore, let one who speaks in a tongue pray that he might interpret. And this point is, this interpreter means to explain, to understand, so that if you speak in the tongue, that pray that there be some sort of understanding. Again, Paul's point is that there be understanding with whatever you do. Again, self-control is important, and you cannot have self-control if you don't know what you're doing. Continuing in verse 14, he says, If I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So if a person is praying in a tongue and Paul is writing to address this issue of this misuse of gifts, particularly we see him bringing out tongues here in chapter 14 and 12 as well. He says, if a person were to do that, if I pray in a tongue, notice what he says. He says that my, I, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. In other words, yeah, my spirit is, there's something going on with my spirit. However, I don't know. My mind is unfruitful. I have no idea what is going on. Is that what it's supposed to be? Well, we know this is a problem because Paul in the next verse brings a solution. If you don't bring a solution 
when there's no problem. But Paul brings a solution. And I want you to notice what's missing from his solution in the next verse. He says, what then is the outcome? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the mind. Also, I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the mind also. Otherwise, if you bless in the spirit only, how will the one who fills in the place of the ungifted say the amen? So his point is, if I am going to pray, he didn't say pray again in tongues. No, he says the person who did that, what you ought to do instead of praying in a tongue is to pray in the spirit and then pray with understanding. Notice what is missing praying in tongues. There's no command to do so. As a matter of fact, there's no need to do so since we believe that speaking in tongues, the gift of tongues, is for the benefit of the unheard gospel to the person who doesn't speak a language that you speak. So that person can hear the gospel in their language. And so this inward acting of the gift for you to benefit you, because some believe that this speaking in tongues or praying in tongues to yourself edifies you, but Paul has already stated several times before, that we should edify the body. There's never a verse that tells us to edify ourselves, including Jude 20, which he's saying, you all edify others. And so we don't see that this passage is, is telling someone to pray in tongues. And it certainly doesn't say, it certainly doesn't say pray in the spirit means or equates praying in tongues because he kind of uh, juxtaposes the two, a person who prays in tongues. And I believe that person is being rebuked for that. And then he says the right, the remedy is to pray with the spirit or pray in the spirit. Now, this phrase, how we know does not mean in the spirit, does not mean in tongues. Let's look at the other times where the, this phrase in the spirit shows up. In Matthew 22, 43, he says, uh, then how does David in the spirit call him Lord? Well, look at the phrase. It says in the Greek, it's in pneumati. We don't believe that David was in tongues calling him Lord. That that's, that doesn't make very much sense. In Luke 1, 17, it is he who will go as a forerunner before him in the spirit. And it's the same phrase in Numati. Well, clearly it's not talking about John the Baptist coming uh, as a forerunner in tongues. And all throughout the Bible, as we look at this, this phrase in the spirit, Luke 2, 27, Acts 19, 21, after these things were finished, Paul purposed in the spirit to go to Jerusalem. Doesn't mean that Paul purposed in tongues to go to Jerusalem. No, so this phrase does not mean in tongues. So why is that important? Because we're not going to take a phrase that we see in Jude and make it mean something for the first time ever, make it mean something that it has never meant before throughout scripture. No, but this understanding of by the power or in the power or according to the power of the Holy Spirit that makes sense. As a matter of fact, if you apply that same rendering to the other passages I just read, well, now it makes sense. David, by the power of the Holy Spirit, John comes in the Holy Spirit, Paul purpose in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what that simply means. So when you pray, you pray according to the power of the Holy Spirit. And we all should do so. We all should want to do what he's wanting us to do according to his purpose. We should not pray. And this is how, how you pray in the spirit. You should not pray for the Lord to give you what you want. You should not pray for the Lord to bless your prayers. You should pray that your prayers are in what he's blessing, that you are in line with what he's doing. The power of the Holy Spirit is what we want to be under as we pray. And so we would do so in his will, according to what he is trying to accomplish. Pray with me. And so that's what it means to pray in the spirit for the benefit, for the purpose of the body, for God being magnified through Christ. Amen.